Hey everyone, Corey here with Mindful Bit, and today just wanted to do a quick book review for you guys. I just wrapped up Permission to Fill by Mark Brackett today. Um, the way I found out about this book in particular was through the Brene Brown podcast, Unlocking Us. And she actually interviewed Mark, and they were discussing his book and his philosophies, and it really resonated with me, and it spoke to me, so I thought, hey, let me get this book and read it. Um, I think it was released earlier this year in 2020, so it's relatively new. Uh, a little bit of background on Mark. Um, he's the founding director of the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence and a professor in the Child Study Center at Yale University. So definitely well educated, but what I liked even more about his perspective is that he suffered a lot of bullying and abuse as a child. Um, so he sort of experienced the impact of that firsthand. And he had this uncle who was a teacher at the time who this uncle was a really strong believer in expressing emotion, um, getting down to the bottom of why kids are feeling the way that they're feeling and really taking that seriously. And I thought it was such a beautiful story and I love how that has shaped him. Uh, he even goes on to create Ruler, which is a methodology for um, pretty much becoming more emotionally intelligent uh, with his uncle. They created this together and they went through these different school systems and tried to get it uh, adopted, which he found there was a lot of issues there with dealing with people uh, and how it's kind of hard to get people on board when it comes to emotions. A lot of people just don't necessarily believe in the power of emotions, even though it's obvious that emotions and feelings drive 100% of our interactions. So he asks early on in the book, he says, how are you feeling? And he sort of talks about how that is the most common phrase we say to one another, and yet it's oftentimes the hardest question to answer. And most of the times we don't even answer it honestly. Like we, we don't ever really share how we're feeling with people. We bottle it up inside, and we haven't really developed techniques to navigate life and deal with challenges uh, emotionally. So uh, when I go through a book like this, I just make a lot of highlights for different um, quotes and stuff that I like. So I'll be posting those quotes in um, below the video so that you can check them out when you read this book. I do want to recommend it. Five out of five stars. It was absolutely fantastic. He breaks it down very well. So in the beginning, he talks about ruler which is recognizing emotion, understanding emotion, labeling emotions, expressing emotion, and regulating emotion. And it was very, very eye-opening uh, as he discussed that. And in particular, he talks about labeling emotion and you know how we really struggle as a society to label how we're feeling. You know, we always water it down to either happy or sad. And even in the book, he gives us this. And he talks about this all the time. And he says, you know, how many of you can actually describe when you're feeling secure, for instance? Or how do you feel when you're desolate or hopeless? Like, we don't typically use these words in everyday life to describe how we're feeling. So the labeling portion of that ruler is very important because if you can, if you can define the way you're feeling at a higher granularity, it's a lot easier for you to move through that and deal with it. So he talks about ruler, he talks about the importance of emotions and the differences uh, as far as cultures are concerned. You know, he talks about how some cultures have more words for happy than we do. So they have different granularities of happiness and how until you really internalize the word for something, it's hard to describe it or feel it. You know, and, and that reminds me of the story of the color blue uh, before the blue pigment was invented, I don't know if people actually saw the color blue. They described the ocean as being purple or the color of wine. And as soon as they had blue pigment and the word blue came into their consciousness, they were able to label it and then it became a thing. So really interesting stuff uh, when he talks about that. Then he moves into different emotions in our life. So he goes into an emotion at home section where he describes emotions in the household 
And one of the quotes from there was, he says, how do you want your children to talk about you when they're older and they're looking back? And he talks a lot of times how at work, we go to work and we're just so pent up and we don't really express our emotions. By the time we get home, we're just so exhausted. We definitely don't want to spend time talking to our children or our spouse or our friends and help them out if they're going through trouble. So he talks about the difference between being an emotional judge versus an emotional scientist. And the emotional judge judges people for the way that they're currently feeling and has knee-jerk reactions and lets the ego get in the way. Whereas the emotion scientist takes time to question the other person, to find out where those feelings are originating in a very calm and compassionate way. And he always says, you want to be the emotion scientist. You want to take time to, to figure out what that person's feeling and where they're coming from so that you can get down to the heart of what's actually wrong with them. And he uses his past as a child when he was being bullied to put some really good examples about how he had sort of wished that his parents would have um, communicated with him when he was dealing with those things instead of just being tired or yelling. And I thought that was very, very powerful. So he talks about emotions at home, and then he goes into a section where he talks about emotions at school. And how, um, you know, integrating social and emotional uh, education into school systems actually has benefits for everyone. And how a lot of times, you know, principals and teachers, they don't really want to adopt that uh, because it feels maybe too campy or uh, too lovey-dovey. But there's a lot of statistics in there about how it helps and how it actually would overall improve the economy and save save money. Uh, one of the quotes from that section is he explained how only 42% of top employers believe new graduates are adequately prepared for the workforce, especially with respect to social and emotional skills. So what that says is that you know people are entering the workforce and they don't know how to regulate their emotions at all. They don't know how to label their emotions and they certainly don't know how to regulate them. And it's stifling. It truly is. He says on page 215, it's not a high IQ that gets you places. And I've always been a firm believer of that. You know, I, I don't care how smart you are. If you don't have emotional skills to back it up, you're not going to be able to communicate with your peers. You're not going to be able to handle those stressful situations. You're not going to be able to deal with those deadlines that seem impossible. You're not going to be able to come up with creative solutions to solve a lot of these problems. So it's very important. And then my favorite section... Uh, he covers emotions at work, and he talks about what are, in the workplace, where do emotions come in? And he says, but emotions are the most powerful force inside the workplace, as they are in every human endeavor. That's page 219. Um, and then he gives some statistics that I just thought were mind-blowing. About 50% of workers use the word stressed, frustrated, or overwhelmed to describe their feelings at work. All right, 50%. And then he says about a third of workers indicated that they felt happy or proud less than 50% of the time they're at work. And it's just heartbreaking for me to know that 50% of workers are just feeling miserable and they're just going through the motions and no one is inspired, no one's really expressing the way they feel, and there's just this lack of communication. Um, so there's some other quotes from that section that I'll, that I'll post so that you can check them out. Um, but I really, really loved this book. I thought it was really powerful. I loved the way he broke it up into different places, work, home, and school. And then the ruler methodology I thought was really, really interesting about recognizing, understanding, labeling, expressing, and regulating your emotions. And me, myself, I like to think that I'm re relatively emotionally intelligent, but this was eye-opening about just how hard it is for me to label my emotions adequately. Uh, and then seeing this list of all of these emotions, let me just show you guys again. Uh, just, you know, that just <laughs> really floored me because I don't use a lot of these words ever to describe how I feel. So, you know, my takeaway from this is learn these words. You know, you have to have the definitions to be able to describe them in your context. And um, I'm going to start there. So... I hope you guys enjoyed this book review of Permission to Feel. 
uh, by Mark Brackett, PhD. I'll put the link for the Brene Brown interview with him on this book. So maybe if you're not convinced by what I say, you can give that a watch. And um, yeah, I hope everyone has a wonderful day and I will talk to you all in the next one. Bye-bye.